Okay, hello, and um, welcome to this introduction on the uh, Visual Studio Code the DevTools extension for Overmine. So what we're going to do here is create a simple little application based on uh, on the To Do MVC application, and we're going to talk about how you can use the uh, VS Code extension to build up your application. Now, first of all, Overmine is pushing this idea that Overmine is your actual application and the components is just an implementation detail. And that means that when you build your state and logic, you're actually able to do that from within VS Code. Uh, you don't have to jump to the browser all the time and implement UI to test your logic. So we are going to see how that works here. Um, and as I said, we're going to use the to-do MVC as an example. Now, typically when we see a mock like this, we think component boundaries, like uh, where are the components here? We have a component for maybe inserting the new title of a to-do, we have the to-dos list, we have each to-do, we have the footer maybe, uh, stuff like that. But we don't think about that at all when uh, Overmind is your application. So what we rather think about is what state do we actually need here? Um, and what logic uh, do we need to um, to manipulate that state. So let's uh, dive into that um, by first looking at the structure of this application. So we have a components folder with two components. We have an overmind folder where the application lives and then we have our index file. Now this index file is uh, pretty simple. It, um, it just renders out the app and it instantiates overmind. So we create Overmind here by uh, inserting the configuration, which holds the state and the, the logic. And then we have a function here called render app, which uses the React uh, render function to, to render out the application using the Overmind provider um, and rendering that to do's component. Now, the reason we have a function here and we run that function instantly is because we also have hot reloading. So you're also going to see how we can use hot reloading to create a really nice flow of uh, building up our application. Because it's not only React that is being rendered again on each hot reload, it's also internally in Overmind, it knows about this hot reloading and is able to uh, handle the state and the logic related to that. Okay. Uh, so in our main index file of Overmind, here we bring in the state, the actions and the effects. We're not going to talk about effects, but typically you have those. Uh, and we export that as the configuration of the app. Then we have our implicit typing so that the Overmind package knows about all the state and logic of our application. Uh, and a note here is that if you don't know TypeScript, um, Overmind is a really great place to start if you want to learn more about TypeScript because an important thing about learning new tools is to get to that moment where you uh, get why it's beneficial to use that tool. And that can be really hard with TypeScript uh, going from like a bottom-up approach. So with Overmind, you're kind of like consuming an API where you get all the benefits out of the box with TypeScript. Um, and then you will see why TypeScript is really, really good. And then you can rather move on to learning TypeScript itself. Because you don't really need to learn TypeScript to use TypeScript with Overmind. Anyways, we also set up the React hook here uh, so that we can expose the state and the logic to our um, components. Okay, but let's get going here. Uh, we uh, want to start out by uh, building up some state. So I have prepared a couple of types here. We have the type for the to-do, which holds an ID, title, and a completed um, value. And then we have the filter, which can be all completed uh, or active. Uh, now, when I work with entities that are unique, I put those entities into an object. I don't put them into an array, because the object allows me to point to any entity uh, directly if I have the ID, which I usually have. So we're going to do the same here. We are going to say that the to-dos is an object and I'm creating the type here now, 
where we say that each key of the to do subject is represents the ID, which is a string, and then each value is a to do. And then we also want a filter, which is this enum of filter. Um, and then we say that to do's is an empty object and the filter starts with the all uh, value. So when I save this now, we can actually see that uh, the dev tools reacted to this and we have our to do's and the filter. So what we're going to do now is move on to some logic. We are going to make it possible to add a new to do uh, to this object. So let's move over to the actions file and we are going to change my action to add to do. And this action actually takes an input. It takes a string, which is the title of the to do. And then the first argument to any action is the overmind context, which holds all the state, the effects and the other actions in the application. But we only want the state, so let's destructure that. And the second argument is the input to the action, which is the title. And then we just create an ID based on the current time. And then we say to do's ID equals. And now TypeScript is helping us here. Uh, we can see that it wants an ID, a title and completed. So let's insert the ID. We have the title and we'll say completed is false. TypeScript is happy. We can save our code and nothing was refreshed now. Like we're, we have opened our application in the background in the browser. Nothing is refreshing here, uh, but we can um, see that we have our uh, add to do action here. Uh, and what we can do is say my action uh, or my to do, sorry, <laughs> talking too much about actions. Uh, and what we can see now is that when we run this uh, action, we run it from the dev tools and itself. And it's actually running in the browser environment now, but you don't have to think about that. What we see is that we run this action, we passed in my to do, and we are mutating our to do's on this key with the following information. And if we move back to our state now, we can see that yes, indeed, we have our action here. So that's pretty cool. Um, so what we're going to do now is talk about how we are going to uh, uh, create a derived state. Like this application shows uh, the to-dos based on the filter. So we want to derive these to-dos based on the filter. And to do that, we can create a new state called current to-dos. And we are going to use the derive type from overmind, which takes the state, which we have up here. And then it takes, uh, what are we going to return from this derive? And that is a list of to-dos. And we can actually just go straight in here, current to-dos, and we can uh, create a function which receives the state. And then we're going to return a list of to-dos. So first we just uh, create the values, uh, use the values from the object, which means we grab every to-do from our to-dos object. Um, but we want to filter them out because we don't want all of them all the time. So we can say if state filter equals filter all, then we want to return true. If the filter is filter active and we have not completed the current to do we are looking at, uh, we want to return true. And if the filter equals completed, uh, and the to-do is actually completed, we also want to return true. If none of these, we want to return false. And as we can see when we save this now, it just popped up. We still have the state we created when we uh, manually ran the action. And we can see that we have our to-do inside here. So what we can do is, for example, I want to test this. So Let's change the filter to completed. 
And we can see that the list is actually empty now because we don't have any completed to do's. But if I go up to completed here and I change to true, it pops up again. So now we were able to test if this derived uh, function or this derived state actually worked. But we are also going to expose logic for the components to, to change the filter. So let's implement that action now. Let's say change filter action filter and then oops we're going to receive a filter here we are going to change the state with this filter so we say filter equals filter that's it we can now test this if we want to it's currently completed so uh, maybe we can test uh, active we pass that in we can see that we are setting the filter state with active and we can actually also see that there was a derived state affected by this. And that is the current to do's. So if we go back now, we can see that filter is active and we don't have any current to do's in our derived state. So that's uh, really nice. Okay, uh, one more thing we are going to expose to our components is the ability to change the completed state. Uh, so what we are going to do here is uh, export a new action called toggle completed. And we can go uh, two ways here. We could uh, pass in a string. Uh, so we pass in the ID of the to-do. And then we could just point to that to-do and flip the state. But we are actually going to pass in the complete to-do because you are not allowed to change these to-dos in the components. Uh, Overmind will block that interaction because you should not uh, be able to mutate state from outside Overmind. But you can pass state into an action and manipulate it inside uh, the action, which is exactly what we're going to do now. So here we don't really care about the context because we are just going to manipulate this single to-do and we are going to say that the completed uh, is going to be the opposite. We're going to toggle it. Okay, nice. Uh, so now we have our actions, we have our state. So now let us jump quickly over to the app. And as you can see, it doesn't do anything. We can add the title here, but nothing like happens. So let's first move to our to-dos. Now, the nice thing about Overmind is that you can just expose all the state and actions to all your components without worrying about uh, performance and, and stuff like that. And you don't have to like do a lot of, um, write a lot of code to, to expose it. You just use it. So let's um, say state and actions here. And we are going to grab that from the use Overmind hook. So now we have all the state and we have all the actions available to this component. So first of all, we are going to say in our form submit, we are going to add a to do by passing in the title. And it knows that we want to pass in stri a string here. So you get help with that using TypeScript. We also need to change the filter here. So change filter, this is the all filter and then it's the active filter, and then it's the completed filter. And then we want to point to state current to do's. Let's save that. And let's see where we are. We don't have anything here now, because uh, we're on the active, but let's move to all. And now we can see the to-do which we actually inserted previously into our state. So we still have everything uh, as we move on implementing our logic. So let's try to uh, add something new here, a new to-do. And we have added that new to-do. But we can't toggle them yet. We haven't uh, implemented that logic yet. So let's move to our to-do. And we are going to, uh, again, we are going to grab Overmind here. 
And the reason we use overmind here uh, is because we're passing overmind state into this um, uh, into this component. We are passing like a to-do object. So we want uh, this component to uh, take control of tracking um, changes on that to-do. But we also want to trigger an action here. So we can grab that from the, uh, from the hook. And what we want to do is whenever we change this checkbox, we want to say actions, toggle completed, and it wants a to-do, so let's pass in that to-do and save it. So let's try again now. I can now check it and let's go to our uh, dev tool. And we can see that when we now toggle this um, to-do, we see exactly what to-do we toggled and what we toggled it to. <laughs> and we can see that the to-do, uh, one single to-do component was affected by this change. So this is really nice. Now we have like each uh, to-do has its own component, which uh, looks at the changes at that um, to-do. So when we flip the completed state, we know that only that single component is interested in, in that change. But if we change to active here, for example, we see that again, we affected the current to-dos and the to-dos component.